the Madison Moore Podcast page, Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. Today, I'm going to recap last night's NBA in-season tournament games. Look at tonight's regular NBA slate. We have NHL, college basketball, soccer, golf, a future for the portfolio, mass singer and survivor, news and notes, and best bet. We'll start with the NBA. What a night in the in-season tournament. I have the results for you. And then we'll look ahead to the games for tonight. Celtics over the Bulls, 124 to 97 to win group C. Nets over the Raptors, 115 103 in group C. Cavs over the Hawks, 128 105. The Pacers had already won group A. Bucks over the Heat, 131-124. Jimmy Butler did not play, but the Heat gave the Bucks all they could handle as the Bucks win Group A. Knicks over the Hornets, 115-91. It's the Knicks win the wild card in the East for the play-in. Good for them. And that was Group B. Group C, Timberwolves over the Thunder, 106-103 in the West, I should say. Um, group B in the West, Mavs over the Rockets, 121-115. And Group C in the West, Kings over the Warriors, 124-123 to win Group C. And the Kings came back in a frantic finish and won that game. Um, So New Orleans actually won Group B in the West. The Lakers won Group A in the West. Sacramento, Group C. The wild card was the Suns. Um, And then the East, it's... Indiana, Milwaukee, Boston, Knicks. So, um, that's your final eight in the end season tournament. Okay. Tonight's games. Uh, 7 o'clock, you have the Lakers at the Pistons. Um, we'll see if LeBron and AD play or not. Um, my line is Lakers 11 and a quarter, total 226 and two fifths. And we have. Um, the Lakers giving seven, total 229 and a half. Um, so am I going to lay with the Lakers? Yes, that's going to be the pick. Um, Wizards Magic, my line is Orlando by 14 and a quarter, total 230 and a 20th, and it's 10 and 234 and a half. Um, for this one, I'm going to take the under, that's a low total, the Magic are playing good defense right now. Um, 7.30, Suns, Raptors. We'll see about um, Kevin Durant. My line is the Suns by three quarters, so 227 and 320. And if Katie doesn't play the Raptors, I'm going to project as a favorite. The Suns are favored by three right now, so 226 and a half. I'm going to take the Raptors getting the three at home. Next up at 8 o'clock, Jazz Grizzlies. My line is Grizzlies by 2, total 227 and a quarter, and it's 4 and 223. I actually like the over, even without Mark and it and, uh, and obviously Ja. Um, Sixers, Pelicans. My line is the Sixers by 1 and 3 quarters, total 229, and it's 2 and a half and 231 and a half under. 9 o'clock, Rockets, Nuggets. My line is the Nuggets by 11 and 3 quarters, total 218 and 3 quarters. And it's seven and two seventeen. I'm gonna lay the seven with Denver. We'll see if Jokic comes back um, tonight. And then last but not least, on NBA TV tonight at ten o'clock, Clippers Kings. We'll see how the Kings respond after uh, that hectic game. I have them giving four and a half total two twenty six and the twentieth, and it is Clippers favored one half total two thirty one. I'm not surprised the Clippers are favored. Um. A, it's nepotism or favoritism in Vegas with the big big names there, but I'm also not surprised because of the situation and no Keegan Murray as well. So I have a six point edge on Sacramento and a less than five point edge on the under. Um, I will take the Sacramento Kings the. Plus the one and a half, because maybe they do find a way. But I understand why the Clippers are favored. I'm not going to complain about that. Like I said, favoritism and um, 
it knows let down spots. So that's a Vegas knows line to me. But I'm certainly not putting Kings in best bet. All right, to the NHL. Um, we will recap the games from yesterday, and I believe tonight's slate is smaller than yesterday's. Leafs over the Panthers 2 1, a shootout. Devils over the Islanders 5 4. That was a big win for New Jersey. Canes over the Flyers 4 1. Preds over the Penguins 3 2 in OT. Wild over the Blues 3 1. Stars over the Jets 2 0. Blackhawks over the Kraken 4 3. Oilers over the Gold Knights 4 5 4 in the shootout. Coyotes over the Lightning 3 1. And the, uh, the Canucks over the Ducks 3 1. I almost just combined Canucks and Ducks, which was funny. Um. Three games tonight, 7 o'clock, you have the Habs at the Blue Jackets. Um, Blue Jackets minus 134, Habs plus 112, over under 6.5, minus 110 each way. Habs plus 1.5 is minus 15, Columbus minus 1.5 is plus 276, I like the over. 7.30 TNT, Red Wings Rangers, the Rangers are 2-1 to one favorites. Red Wings plus 164, over under 6.5, overs plus 110, unders minus 134, Wings plus one half is minus one fifty six. Rangers minus one half is plus one thirty. They just signed Patrick Kane. Um, I don't think he will play tonight. Um, eleven six and three. That's respectable for the Red Wings. Good job by them. Um, but I think this is a bounce back spot for New York after losing to Buffalo. You know they lost that game because they put up their heart and soul in that Boston game, and rightfully so. They had to win that Boston game. I thought. Um. So I'm going to lay the one and a half on the puck line with the Rangers here. I do Rangers puck line and over in the same gamer, but I'll do the puck line with the Rangers bounce back spot. And at 1030, you have the Capitals at the Kings. So there's some uh, fun little uh, subplots to this game. Um, Ovechkin against um, the Kings and Kopitar and... The starting goalie for L.A., Phoenix Copley, used to be in the Capitals organization. So, like, that's just some storylines there. Um, Kings minus 215, Caps plus 176, over under 6 and a half, overs plus 114, unders minus 140. Caps plus 1 half is minus 137, Kings minus 1 half is plus 114. I like the over at plus 114. Now we'll move on to college basketball. We will go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to what is a pretty large slate for tonight. Winthrop over Bob Jones, 90-49. Michigan State over Georgia Southern, 86-55. Georgia Tech upsets number 21, Mississippi State, 67-59. Miami of Ohio beats Spalding, 82-43. Cincinnati beats Howard, 86-81 in OT. Indiana State beats Southern Illinois, 77-48. 77-48. Furman beats SC State, 86-78. Citadel beats Charleston Southern, 81-52. Southeast Louisiana beats Southern New Orleans, 101-55. Norfolk State beats William & Mary, 96-62. Western Carolina beats Tennessee Tech, 69-65. Providence beats Wagner, 86-52. Maryland beats Ryder, 103-76. South Carolina beats Notre Dame, 65-53. Syracuse beats LSU, 80-57. Number 12, Kentucky beats number 8, Miami, 95-73. Little Rock beats Ball State, 90-64. Neil Monroe beats Northwestern State, 74-70. Missouri beats Pitt, 71-64. Number 5, Kansas beats Eastern Illinois, 71-63. Number 9, Baylor beats Nichols, 108-70. SIU Eversville beats Missouri Baptist, 86-62. South Dakota beats Waldorf, 93-71. Southwest, or Southern Indiana beats Southwest, or East-West, 107-49. Loyal Chicago beats Chicago State, 62-53. Utah State beats St. Louis, 81-76. Kansas State beats Royal Roberts, 88-78 in OT. McNeese beats UAB, 81-60. North Dakota beats Concordia, 87-56. Number one, Purdue beats Texas Southern, 99-67. Jackson State upsets Arkansas State, 75-71. So Jackson State finally gets a win in a spot where I give them out. Marquette, or number three, Marquette beats Southern, 93-56. Number 11, Gonzaga beats Bakersfield, 81-65. New Mexico State beats Southwest, 84-49. Ole Miss beats NC State, 72-52. Clemson upsets Alabama, or number 23, Alabama, 85-77. UNLV beats Akron, 80, or 72-70. Portland State beats Portland, 75-74. Washington beats UC San Diego, 83-56. And Pepperdine beats Ohio, um, Idaho State, 77-62. Now we look ahead to 
tonight's large sleep. At noon today, we have Chattanooga and Lipscomb. I have Lipscomb favored by 10. We're going to start doing totals on the podcast at least Friday for college basketball. Um, and it's 2.5 and, and 151.5. I'll lay the 2.5 with Lipscomb. 4 o'clock, Central Con Army. My line is Central Con 13.5, and, and it's Army 1.5 after the 129.5. I'll take Central Con plus the points plus 110. 4.30, UMass Lowell Stone Hill. My line is Lowell by a whopping 20.5, and, and it's 16.5 and, and 149.5. I'll lay the points. 6 o'clock, Campbell Jacksonville. My line is Jacksonville 4.5, and, and it's 5.5 and 129.5. And um, over. All right, uh, Fox Sports 1 and 6 3. St. Joe's at number 18, Villanova, Big Five Classic. My line is Villanova 14 and a half. And it's 12 and a half and 149. I'll lay the points of Villanova. Cleveland State and Youngstown State conference game in the Horizon League. My line is Cleveland State by 7 and a half. And it's Youngstown State 2 and a half to 1 for 8 and a half. Give me Cleveland State plus the points of plus 122 outright. Um, Fox Sports 2, Northeastern, and Seton Hall. My line is Seton Hall by a whopping 24.5. And, and it's 15.5. And, and total is 141.5. I'll lay the points with Seton Hall. East Tennessee State and App State. My line's App State 10.5, total 137.5. I'm sorry, that's a lie. That's FanDuel, and mine is 20.5. I'm going to lay it with App State. 7 o'clock, Buffalo at number 22, James Madison. Mine is James Madison by a whopping 35 and a half. And it is 21 and a half and 159 and a half. I laid the points. Albany State and Florida A&M we can skip, as well as Fredonia State and Lemoyne. Next up, Drexel and Lafayette. My line is um, Drexel by 23 and a half. And it is um, six and a half and one twenty three and a half. I'll lay the points with Drexel. All right, Coastal Georgia steps me skip USC Upstate and Coastal Carolina. My line is Upstate by twelve, and Upstate is um. A one and a half point underdog total one forty six. I give me upstate plus the points and plus one twelve outright. Prairie View Tulane, my line is Tulane by a whopping forty two and a half, and it's fourteen and a half and one fifty six and a half. I lay with Tulane. They're just better than Prairie View hands down. Morgan State High Point, my line's High Point five and a half, and it's twelve and a half and one sixty one and a half. I'm going to take Morgan State the cover, the big number. Dartmouth Vermont, my line is Vermont by twenty three. And it's 13 and a half and 133 and a half. I'll lay the points. UC Irvine, Decane. My line is Decane 17 and a half. And it's only um, three and a half for Decane. Total 145 and a half. I'll lay the three and a half with Decane. Marist, Iona. My line's Iona 10 and a half. Here we have a, a MAC game, Metro Atlantic MAC. And it's seven half and one three seven half. I'm gonna lay seven half with Iona, Florida Gulf Coast and FIU on CBS Sports Network. My line is Gulf Coast by three, and it's Florida International by three and a half to one forty four and a half. I'll take Gulf Coast plus the points and plus one thirty four outright. All right, Big Five game between LaSalle and Temple. Big Five Classic. My line is Temple by a half. And Temple is probably favored, right? Let's see. Yes, three and a half total one forty three and a half. Give me LaSalle plus the points. I'm not gonna give him out outright, though. Um Loyola, Maryland, Columbia. My line is Columbia twelve and a half. And it's seven and a half and one forty five and a half. I'll lay to seven and a half. St. Fran PA and Lehigh. My line is Lehigh 28 and a half, and Lehigh is favored by 15 and a half, it looks like. Yes, total 143 and a half. I'll lay the points with Lehigh. NJIT, George Mason. My line is George Mason by a whopping 36, and it's 20 and a half and 135 and a half. I'll lay the points. 
Robert Morris in Northern Kentucky, um, a Horizon League game. My line's Northern by 21. And it's 7.5 and 137.5. I'm going to lay the 7.5. Another Horizon League game, IAPUI in Wright State. My line's Wright State, 22.5. And, and it is Wright State. Giving 17 half totals, 153 half. I'll lay the points. All right, another Horizon League, Green Bay, Purdue, Fort Wayne. My line's Purdue, Fort Wayne by 16 and a half. And it's 10 and a half and 139 half. I'll lay the 10 and a half with Purdue, Fort Wayne. Oakland, Detroit. Another, um... Horizon League game. I have Oakland by a whopping 22 and a half. Obviously, Detroit's the worst team in that league right now. And it's 7 and a half and 146 and a half. I lay the points with Oakland. Stony Brook, Yale. My line is Yale by 13. It's 13 and a half and 138 and a half. I'll take the over. Princeton Bucknell. My line is Princeton by 32, and it's 15 and a half. Total 131 half. I'll lay the points of Princeton. Monmouth Cornell. I have Cornell by 18 and a half. And we don't have the line out for that game yet. Gardner Webb Queens. My line's Gardner Webb by 5. And it's 1 and a half and 146 and a half. And I'll lay the 1 and a half with Gardner Webb. BU Albany, my line is BU by nine. And would I be shocked if Albany's favorite? Yeah, they're favored. Seven and a half, total one forty two and a half. Give me Boston University plus the points plus two eighty outright. Um Radford Old Dominion. My line is Radford by five and a half. And it's Old Dominion 1 half, total 134.5. I'm going to take Radford plus the points and plus one away outright. American Harvard. My line is a pick em. And it's 9.5 and, and 143.5. Give me American plus the points. I'm not going to take them outright because I just think Harvard's a better team. Central Michigan and Ohio State on the Big Ten Network. My line is Ohio State by a whopping 41. And it's 23 and a half and 140. I'll lay the points at Ohio State. Maine and Holy Cross. My line is Maine, three and a half. And it is four and a half and 133 and a half. Um, I'll take the over. VMI Navy. My line is Navy, two and a half. And it's 4.5 and 141.5. I'll take VMI in the points. All right, big game. ACC SEC Challenge. 7.15 ESPN. Number 10, Tennessee. Number 17, North Carolina. My line is Carolina by three. And Carolina's favored by one and a half. Total is 143.5. I'll take the over. ESPN 2, number 14, Texas A&M at Virginia. My line's Virginia, four and a half. And it's one half, one twenty-six and a half. I absolutely love Virginia. Love when the unranked team is favored against the ranked opponent. We have that here. ESPNU, Florida Wake. My line's Florida by one. And it's four and a half and one fifty-six and a half. I'll take Wake plus the points to cover. 730, Richmond, Wichita State. Mine's Wichita by eleven and a half. And it's three and a half, one forty one half. I'll lay the points at Wichita State. Who's looked pretty good so far this year? Um, Tarleton State, Stephen F. Austin. Man, Stephen F. Austin by 15 and a half, and it's 9.5 and, and 140.5. And I'll lay the points. Grand Canyon and Texas, Rio Grande Valley. This is a whack game. My line is Grand Canyon by 26, and it's 13.5 and, and 151. I'll lay the points. Dallas Christian AM Commerce, we can skip. Missouri Valley games. Um, 8 o'clock, Evansville, Missouri State. Mine's Evansville, 4.5. And it's Missouri State 11 half, total 137. I'll give me Evansville plus the points. Evansville is 6 0, and they're 
11 and a half point underdog. So we have a lot of options on the board for best bet. All right, Drake Valpo. My line is Drake 38 and a half, and it's 12 and a half, 142 and a half. I'll lay it with Drake. Belmont, Northern Iowa, another MWC game. It's Northern Iowa by 12 and a half. And it's 8.5 and, and 156 and a half. I'll lay the points. Bradley Murray State. My line is Bradley by 18. And it's 3.5 and 141 and a half. I'll lay the points. Bellarmine, Louisville. My Louisville by 12. And Louisville is giving 4.5 totals, 139. I'll lay it with Louisville. Campbellsville, Western Kentucky. We can skip. Morehead State, Austin P. So former OVC rivals. Mine's Morehead State by nine. And um, it's Austin P. by one half total, 131. I'll take Morehead plus the points and plus 110 outright. Davidson, Charlotte. Mine's Charlotte by four. And it's three and a half and 123. And a half. I'll gladly take the over. Tennessee State and Bama and M. My line is Tennessee State by a whopping thirty three and it's six and a half and one fifty and a half. I'll lay the points. Dayton SMU. My line is Dayton five and a half. And it's Southern Miss Thoughtist by one half total one thirty five and I'll give me Dayton plus the points and one, minus one hundred five outright. Dayton might close as a favorite. All right, whack game. Um. Abilene Christian and Texas Arlington. We have a couple whacks in a row. Um, mine's Ab Christian by four and a half. And it's UT Arlington by two and a half, total 143 and a half. Give me Ab Christian plus the points and plus 132 outright. Another whack game, Seattle, Utah Valley. Mine's Utah Valley by a half. And it's Seattle by two and a half, total 136 and a half. Give me Utah Valley plus the points and plus 122 outright. Um, Murray Mack, Georgetown on Fox Sports 1 and 8.30. My line's Georgetown, 30 and a half. And it's 9 and a half and 139. I'll lay with Georgetown. Binghamton, Colgate. My line's Colgate by 15. And it's 9 and a half and 140. I'll lay the points. Cal Baptist, Southern Utah. So another whack game. My line is Cal Baptist, 14 and a half. And Southern Utah, 1 and a half, total 141. And a half. I'll take Cal Baptist plus the points and minus 105 outright. All right, big game at 9 o'clock on CBS Sports Network, Colorado at number 20, Colorado State. My line's Colorado by 7.5. And, and it's State by 2.5, total 148.5. Give me Colorado plus the points and plus 128 outright. I think Colorado State is right for the taking. Um, AM Corpus Christi, UTEP. Mine's UTEP 15.5. And, and it's 13.5 and, and 145.5. And I'll lay the points. A sneaky good mid major game, Louisiana Tech, New Mexico. My line's New Mexico 15 and a half, and it's 6 and a half and 149 and a half. I'll lay the points at New Mexico. Sam Houston and Arizona State on the Pac 12 network. Mine's Arizona State by 24, and it's 6 and a half and 138 and a half. I'll lay the points. Um, uh, North Florida and Iowa. On the Big Ten Network, mine's Iowa by 29. And it's 25 and a half and 167 and a half. Um, I'll lay the points. But yeah, I don't know what happened with Montana and Nevada. Maybe it's on later. Yes. Um, Denver, Idaho. My line's Idaho by a half. And it's Denver 5 and a half, total 154 and a half. Give me Idaho plus the points and plus 94 outright. All right, a big one. ACC SEC Challenge, 915 ESPN, number 7, Duke at Arkansas. Mine's Duke 4 and a half. And it's 5 and a half and 149 and a half. That's a high total. But I'll still take the over. BC Vandy on the SEC Network. My line is BC by 9. And it's Vandy 1 and a half, total 144 and a half. Give me BC plus the points and plus 110 outright. Georgia, Florida State on the ACC network. Mine's Florida State by nine of ten and a half, and it's eight and a half and one fifty one half. I'll lay the point. Virginia Tech, Auburn on ESPN two. My line is Auburn by fourteen. And it's eight and a half and one fifty and a half. I'll lay the point. Auburn. 
San Jose State, Cal Poly at 10 o'clock. My line is San Jose State by 17. And it's 10 and a half and 127. I have to lay the points. Northern Colorado, San Diego. Mine's San Diego by 18. It's 4 and a half and 115. I have to lay the points. Montana, Nevada. My line is Nevada, 9.5. And, and it's 14 and a half and 141. I'll take Montana to cover. Northern Arizona and Santa Barbara. My line is Santa Barbara by 20 and a half. And it's 13 and a half and 148 and a half. I'll lay the points. Menlo, Santa Clara, we can skip. Cal State, North Ridge, and Pacific. My line's Pacific, 15 and a half. And it's 3 and a half and 148 and a half. I'll take the points. I'm sorry, lay the points. Read that wrong. Um, Central Arkansas, Loyola, Merriment. My line is Merriment by 44 and a half. And it's 19 and a half and 145 and a half. I'll lay the points. And then Pac-12 Network, 11 o'clock. Eastern Washington, USC, SC by 34 and a half. And it's 17 and a half and 153 and a half. I'll lay the points with Southern Cal. Okay, now I'll move on to soccer. Um, we will go over Champions League results. Look ahead to today. Um, we have some other leagues going on today too, which is a uh, pretty cool. Um, we'll start with the Champions League. That's the biggest on the board. Um, Shakhtar over Antwerp 1-0, Lazio over Celtic 2-0, Young Boys over Red Star 2-0, PSG Newcastle 1-1 draw, Dortmund over Milan 3-1, Man City over RP Leipzig 3-2, Atletico over Feyenoord 3-1, Barcelona over FC Porto 2-1. Alright, 12-45, you have Sevilla and PSV. This is Group B. PSV is favored, and they are plus 140. Sevilla plus 180, draw plus 260. I'm taking PSV on the road at plus 140. Galastari and Man United. This is Group A. Man United's underwhelmed in Champions League so far. They're favored, though, plus 150. Galastari's plus 165, draw plus 260. I'll take Man United here at plus 150. 3 o'clock, Braga and Union Berlin. And this is group um, C. Um, Braga's even money due to Berlin's plus 260, draw plus 260. I'm going to go with Braga at home at even money. Arsenal Lens. This is Group B. Arsenal's minus 270. Lens is plus 750. The draw is 4 to 1. For this one, I'm going to do over 2 and a half goals, minus 116. Real Sociedad and FC Salzburg. This is Group D. Um. Sociedad's minus 220, Salzburg's plus 600, the draw's plus 350. For this one, I'm going to do under 2.5 goals at even money. Real Madrid and Napoli, that's a big one. That is Group C. Real Madrid's minus 125, Napoli's 3-1, to one, and so is the draw. I'm going to do under 2.5 goals at plus 132. Next up is Benfica and Inter Milan. This is Group D. Um, Benfica's plus 150. Inter Milan's plus 185. The draw's plus 230. Um, I'm going to take Inter Milan on the road, plus 185. And then Bayern and Copenhagen, last but not least. And that's Group A. Bayern minus 48, Copenhagen 12 to 1. The draw is 6 to 1. I'm going to go under 3 and a half goals at minus 118. Okay, now we'll do our uh, championship. From yesterday, now we look at to today. West Brom over Cardiff 1 0. Coventry over Plymouth 1 0. Hull over Rotherham 4 1. Borough over Preston 4 0. 
QPR over Stoke 4-2 and Watford over Norwich City 3-2. All right, now today at 2.45, you have Blackburn and Birmingham. Um, Blackburn's minus 140. Birmingham is plus 330. The draw is plus 280. I think the draw's in play. Plus 280. Let's go with that. Leeds and Swansea. Leeds minus 350. Swansea's plus 750. The draw's plus 460. I'm going to do over three and a half goals at plus 126. Sheffield Wednesday and Leicester. Leicester minus 95. Sheffield 5 to 1. The draw's 3 to 1. Over two and a half goals, minus 116. Southampton, Bristol City. Southampton, minus 185. Bristol, plus 450. Draw, plus 320. Here we'll do under two and a half goals at plus 108 again. Sunderland and Huddersfield. Um, Sunderland, minus 220. Huddersfield, plus 550. The draw is plus 340. For this one, we're going to do under two and a half goals at plus 110. And last but not least, 3 o'clock, Ipswich, Mawal. Um, Ipswich minus 170, Milwaukee plus 430, the draws plus 290. Here, let's do under two and a half goals at plus 112. We have a La Liga game today at 3 o'clock, Mallorca and Cadiz. Um, Mallorca minus 105, Cadiz plus 340, and the draw is plus 210. Um... I'm going to go with the draw at plus 210. Rare French League 1 game for a Wednesday. So I guess they're doing that Wednesdays for a little bit. 1 o'clock at Montpellier and Claremont Foot. Um, let me pull up those odds real quick. Montpellier minus 120. Claremont is plus 310. The draw is plus 250. Uh, I'm about to draw plus two fifty. And then Liga MX first leg tonight, eight o'clock Leon and America. Eight versus one. America's been the better team all year. Um Leon's played a lot of big games, obviously. Um America's plus 120, Leon's plus 195, the draw's plus 250. And the funny thing is that the eight seed starts at home, which is weird. Um, We'll go with America, plus 120. And at 10 o'clock, Athletic San Luis and Montieri. That's the 7-2. T- um, San Luis, plus 220, Montieri, plus 115, draw, plus 230. We'll go with Montieri on the road at plus 115. Okay, now we're on the golf. Um, we have some tee times and a pick to do. The Hero World Challenge. Very interesting tournament. All right, 1046, Brian Harmon, Lucas Glover. 1057, Seb Straka and Cam Young. 1108, Wendell Clark, Tony Finau. 1119, Ricky Fowler, Keegan Bradley. 1130, Justin Rose, Matt Fitzpatrick. 1141, Scotty Burns and Scotty Scheffler, or Sam Burns, 11.52, Justin Thomas, and the one and only Tiger Woods, the return of the GOAT. So that should be fun. 12.03, Colin Murakawa and Jason Day. 12.14, Will Zalatoris and Jordan Spieth. 12.25, Victor Hovind and Max Homa. So, um, small group. Um, I think it's anybody's game. I mean, I wonder if Tiger's the longest odds on the board, which would be wild. Um, all right, so Holfman's 4-1. to one. Ske- uh, Scheffler's 450. Mark Cow is 8-1. to one. Home is 850. Matt Fitz- Matty Fitzpatrick, 16-1. So is Justin Thomas. Cam Young's 18. Ricky Fowler and Jordan Spieth are 22. Finau, Sam Burns. Wyndham Clark, 25 to 1. Keegan Bradley, Brian Harmon are 35. Jason Day, Will Zal Torres are 35. Seb Straka, Justin Rose at 40. Lucas Glover's at 55. And yes, Tigers 80 to 1. Longest odds on the board. But for my pick for this, um, I think it's a wide open field. 
Um, I think anybody can win it, maybe other than Tiger. But if you get 2019 Masters Tiger, then he has a chance. Um, but where has that guy gone? I don't know. Um, there's a couple guys I'm eyeing. But there's a guy at 20 to 1 that has had some decent finishes in tournaments. And his name is Ricky Fowler. I think he's going to come through here. I'm going to lay a fifth of a unit, 20 to 1, Ricky Fowler, to win the Hero World Challenge. Although, I'm rooting like hell for Tiger to put up a fight. Okay, the portfolio. Um, we obviously skipped the portfolio yesterday because I was in a state that does not legalize sports betting, and now I'm in a state that legalizes sports betting, so here we are. Um, so there's a lot of things up for grabs um, in terms of futures. Um There's a couple of national title odds that I'm tempted to pull the trigger on. But um, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not um, for college football. Maybe for college basketball, I'll eye it. I'm going to look at in-season tournament. The one I was just looking at was um, Alabama to win the... Uh, the title at ten to one, which would be crazy. Um. So the in season tournament winner. Um. I don't think any of those long shots are gonna win it. The quarterfinal lines are out. For Monday and Tuesday. Um, so the national championship in men's college basketball is one where I want a couple of features on heading into March. I did one with Texas a few weeks ago. They were at like 35 to one. There's a team out there that. Has some core players back from a team that underachieved a year ago. You could be thinking to yourself, you could be talking about two teams. This team is 40 to 1. They were in battle for Atlantis. Um, their lone loss came in battle for Atlantis. I think this team is going to win tonight on ESPN, and their number could go lower. And they're at home. And the North Carolina Tar Heels are 40-1. to 1, And I am going to put a fifth of a unit on Carolina at 40-1 to 1 to win the title. Um, that's just ridiculous. Um, let's hope they win tonight and that number goes to, like, 30-1. to 1. Tennessee's 15-1, to 1, which is crazy to me. Carolina will beat Tennessee tonight. That number's going to get lower. And they have the experience. And they have a head coach in Hubert Davis that's coached in big games before. So why not Carolina? Okay, now we're going to talk about the Matt Singer. Um, the Matt Singer tonight is a double elimination. Um, it is, I believe, the semifinals before the season finale next week. Oh, so Group A returns. So double elimination in Group A. So this is the Group A semifinal. So that makes... 
more sense. So it's going to be pickle. Oh, wait, no, that's group B. Oh, no, that is group A. So pickle went home. Never mind. So it's going to be cow, s'more, and gazelle. So it's going to be, oh, it is the group A final. It's the disco era. So it's cow, s'more, and gazelle. Some talented performers are under those masks. But yeah, group A was there for a minute. Um, so gazelle, um, had some stellar performances. And I keep forgetting that the first episode was the Demi Lovato episode. Um, first episode of Group A, she performed um, Uninvited by Alanis Morissette, and then she sang um, The One That Got Away by Katy Perry, and then she sang Lucky by Britney Spears. Um, a lot of interesting clues about Gazelle. I think this is a big star. Um, S'more performed Slow Hands by Niall Horan. Moves Like Jagger by Maroon 5. And Hey There Delilah by Plain White Tees. And this is obviously somebody very talented as well. And then The Cow. Um, she performed Bones by Imagine Dragons. Um, Treasure by Bruno Mars. And Cry Me a River by Justin Timberlake. I meant to say he, I keep forgetting Cow's the, the one that, um, um, we thought was a female when um, Cal was doing its clues. And then we heard the voice and we were amazed. And even the uh, the panel in that first episode was uh, thinking it was a female as well. But yeah, Cal was obviously somebody big time as well. Um, but unfortunately, one of the, um, two of those three is going home tonight. So... We're going to have two monster unmaskings tonight on The Masked Singer. And I think the person that wins Group A. Oh, I think S'more goes home. I think S'more comes. S'more will be the first unmasked. I'm going to say Cow survives. Gazelle goes home. Although, I think there's a distinct chance that... Um... Gazelle survives and Cow goes home. I'm going to say S'more and Gazelle go home. Cow advances. All right, Survivor really quickly. Um, We talked about it on yesterday's show. Um, How pretty much Kendra pretty much ran her mouth wanting D out and how that pretty much cost her a chance to stay in the game. That combined with Emily and Katura, two of her allies, not having votes. Um, so I'm interested to see how this episode plays out. It's down to eight. Um, it's Emily, Katura, D, Bruce, Jake, Drew, Austin, and Mama Julie. And I think any of those eight players can win, maybe other than Jake. Because I think Jake um, comes off a little, um, uh, you know, he just doesn't come off as somebody that would win Survivor. Maybe I'm wrong. But I think Bruce has a better chance to win than he does. I think Bruce goes home tonight. If not Bruce, then it's going to be Jake. Because I could see where Mama J rallies the, the group together and says we need to vote out Jake. He wrote my name down. Or um, 
Katura gets everybody to write down Bruce, which I think is more possible because Bruce won the last two immunities. I think Drew wins immunity this time. I think Drew is due to come through, and he's a strong player. And I think next out is going to be Bruce. Like I said earlier, and then winner pick, I'm going to say Mama J. Because she's a leader, and she's adored by everybody. And I think it's absurd that Jake wrote her name down, and which was stupid. But um, I think that um, she'll find their way into the final three. She'll have the respect of the jury. Okay, news and notes. Um, so really bad news for the Houston Texans. On Titus Howard likely out for the season, is he'll have knee surgery. That is brutal. For the Texans who are fighting for a wild card spot in the AFC and already have a not so great offensive line as is. Jonathan Taylor is having thumb surgery as the Colts hope he returns in two to three weeks. Justin Jefferson will be activated off IR today as he will practice. That is good news for Minnesota. They need him back. If he played in that Bears game, they would have won probably. Aaron Rodgers won't rush back as he says decision will hinge on health and Jets' playoff chances. He won't come back because the Jets are finished. And they look like a team that has quit on its coach. Um, so some college news. Um, Trent. Uh, Trent Bray got promoted as defensive coordinator at Oregon State to its new head coach. Um, somebody obviously under Jonathan Smith. We'll see how that works out. I'm not the biggest fan of promoting in-house unless you know for sure that he's the guy. Um, so we'll see how that plays out. Um, Wisconsin running back Braylon Allen declares for the draft. Um, I think he's going to be a fine pick somewhere. Bobby Petrino returns to Arkansas as its offensive coordinator, so that's interesting. A ton of award finalists. Um, the Davey O'Brien Award, best quarterback Jaden Daniels, Bo Nix, and Michael Penix. Um, top receiver, the uh, Blightnikoff Award, Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Nebers, and Rome Adunze. Those are all going to be first-round picks. In the draft this spring, um, the college football playoff rankings came out last night. We'll go over them very quickly. Um, all right, so 25 through 21 is Kansas State, Liberty, Clemson, Tulane, Tennessee. 20 through 16, Oregon State, North Carolina State, Oklahoma State, Notre Dame, Iowa. 15 through 11, Arizona, Louisville, LSU, Oklahoma, Ole Miss. 10 is Penn State, 9 is Missouri, 8 is Alabama, 7 is Texas, 6 is Ohio State, 5 is Oregon, and then your top 4 in order is 1 is Georgia, 2 is Michigan, 3 is Washington, and 4 is Florida State. Um, I don't see Florida State getting in. The ACC is horrible. Um, you can blame Clemson for that. You can blame Miami for that. You can blame even Carolina for that. And plus, Jordan Travis asserts that they don't belong in the college football playoff. This is not 2014 Ohio State. There's a lot of arguing on um, Twitter about this, but I'm in the argument that they don't belong in the playoff because your quarterback got injured and you suck without your quarterback. You only put up 24 points with your quarterback. Um, so my prediction... Um, is that they do not get in. And I think there's a decent chance they lose to Louisville so we don't have to worry about it. I think Ohio State has a path to get in for them being at six. Texas has to win the Big 12, in my opinion, to get in. And I think Alabama has to win the SEC title game and Texas has to lose to Oklahoma State. So Alabama's in trouble. I think Ohio State's in trouble, even though Texas is beneath them. But to me, you have to be a conference champion to make the college football playoff unless if the um, if there's like 
that Ohio State 2015 where you take the loss and then you're still in the playoff because you had one loss and and a lot of conference champions had two losses. So that's my opinion. So we'll see how that goes. It's an eight-team race for for the four spots, in my opinion. Um... A local radio anchor, WFAA's Mike Leslie, rips Texas A&M as he does not hold back on Mike Elko's expectations. Um, so some more NFL stuff. Um, the Chargers are done with Brandon Staley, according to Bleach Report's Jordan Schultz. So um, you knew that was coming. The only way he wasn't going to get fired is if they actually made the Super Bowl, in my opinion. Um, Maybe even if they won the Super Bowl. He's so bad. He's the worst coach in the league by a mile. Um, Shaq Leonard is expected to pick a new team this weekend. Um, He was talking to the Eagles. He was talking to the Cowboys. I think the Eagles make sense because Kobe Dean's hurt. And I think Dallas makes sense because Leighton Van Der Esch is hurt. I think it has to be one of those two NFC East teams. That should be San Francisco. And what a slap in the face that would be to everybody. I think Detroit can use him too. Um, so back to college. Um, Kirby Smart had high praise for um, the Bama quarterback, Milrow. He compared him to Lamar Jackson, which is crazy. Crazy talk. Um all right, that's now there's three Michigan State quarterbacks entering the transfer portal. Now Noah Kim is in the portal. A lot of baseball stuff we have to talk about. Um, the comeback player of the years were announced. Um, Liam Hendricks in the American League and Cody Bellinger in the National League. That's not surprising for either league. And you knew Hendricks was going to win because he came back from cancer. Um. You knew that was a lock. That's like Tamar Hamlin a little bit in the NFL. Like, Tamar Hamlin's a lock for the comeback player here in the NFL because he literally died on the field and came back to life. So, if you play, you came back from that, you clinched comeback player of the year. Tamar Hamlin is winning that award, and it's disrespectful if it's not unanimous. That's my take on that. Um... The San Francisco Giants are expected to land either Shoei Ohtani... Or um, Yamamoto. Um, weren't they expected to land one of Aaron Judge or Carlos Correa last offseason? I'm not seeing it. I'm not buying it till I see it. I'm sorry. San Francisco always whips on free agents for some reason. Maybe Bob Melvin being there now helps, but I'm not buying that. Maybe go sign Blake Snell instead. That would be a decent free agent pickup. Maybe they could sign Cody Ballinger. That'd be a great addition for San Francisco. Um, and speaking of Yamamoto, he wins his third MVP in a row in Japan, so that's exciting for him. And then the Yankees apparently have been saving 18 for him. There's no way they're not getting him. It's embarrassing if... They save 18 for him, according to Andy Martino, and they don't get him. That's embarrassing. The Yankees have to sign him now, and I think they will. I predicted that they were going to sign him before the start of the offseason, and I think that they need a number two behind Garrett Cole, and honestly, they need him more than they need Cody Bellinger. I think Cody Bellinger could be the next Jacoby Ellsbury in terms of a bad contract on the Yankees or Aaron Hicks. Name whoever center fielder free agent signing they they've been busts lately Jacoby Ellsbury Aaron Hicks well that was more of a trade and they extended him and that was obviously really bad so if I'm the Yankees maybe signing Ballinger isn't the best thing for you and I would go with Yamamoto and the man Juan Soto and the Brewers are nearing a landmark extension with Jackson Churio who has not played a second in Major League Baseball. They must be really sold on this kid then. Andre Dawson wants his Hall of Fame cap switch from the Expos to the Cubs, so that's interesting. Some big basketball news. Mark Cuban is selling stake in the Mavericks as 
He's selling majority stake worth around $3.5 billion to the Adelson family. This is shocking. This was um, reported by Mark Stein of the New York Times and then Shams of The Athletic backed it up. Um, but that This is wild, and um, that's not good for the Mavericks, in my opinion, even though um, he's still supposed to run the team. But, like, if the Adelson family takes over ownership... I don't think they're going to do as good as a job as Cuban has. At least Cuban is still, like, involved. But my question is, what's next for Cuban? My first thought is, oh, he might run for president or a governor. I think he's going to get into politics. That's why I think he did this. I mean, I could be wrong. But it's absolutely shocking that Cuban did this. LaMelo Ball out extended time as he suffered a serious sprain in his right ankle. We talked about Jimmy Butler missing that heat game last night, which cost him the game, quite frankly. And then the Knicks would have won Group B in the East, courtesy of their big comeback against the Heat the other night. Um, Kevin Durant resurfaced an old tweet from 2009 whether he about him buying Christmas gifts, but Durant no longer feels generous. Pat Beverly rips Austin Reeves as he has beef with his former teammate after too small taunt last season. Yikes. And then hockey. Um, so the Red Wings signed Patrick Kane. Daniel Sprong offered Kane 88, which is pretty cool. Um, there's a nine-year-old on the Flyers bench, Owen Makiche, um, he's suited up for Hockey Fights Cancer Night, which is very nice. And then the Blackhawks wave Corey Perry after unacceptable conduct. The rumor on social media we know was that was surfacing that um, Corey Perry um, had a sexual intercourse with Connor Bedard's mom. And then the Blackhawks denied it and said that that wasn't true. But I just honestly think that was a social media rumor that everybody wanted to uh, speculate about, which is wrong. And we don't know what happened to Corey Perry. Maybe he wanted out of Chicago, and maybe the Blackhawks tried to trade him, and you couldn't get anything for him. And he's going to leave there and go to the Maple Leafs or... Maybe the Rangers, maybe um, Vegas or Dallas or one of these contenders to hop on and try to win a cup. And um, we'll see where he lands. Okay, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, obviously a long show today. Um, we had to do a couple of the Tuesday segments today, obviously, which... Makes it a little longer. Um, so, I'm going to lay a half unit for best bet. Um, in college basketball, I'm going to bet on a team that's undefeated and they're getting double-digit points, and that's Evansville, plus 11.5. And they are playing... Missouri State. Now it's up to 12 and a half, which is crazy. So half unit Evansville plus 12 and a half against Missouri State. That's my best bet of the day. That's it for the show. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything and looking ahead to everything. Tomorrow we have Thursday Night Football tomorrow between the Seahawks and the Cowboys as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.